Hi, I'm glad you could join me. I'm in the Old Testament book of Joshua, the 23rd chapter. Now, the 23rd and the 24th chapter appear to be two messages that Joshua gave to the children of Israel just before his death, or at least they were the last public uh, proclamations, the last public speeches that he gave to the people at that particular time. And in the 23rd chapter, which is where our focus is today, he tells the people that they need to make sure that they don't, uh, they don't go after the idols of the Canaanite peoples that were conquered when Joshua and the children of Israel, of Israel entered into this particular land. But rather, they're to cling, cling to the Lord their God. Now, I read that particular verse not long ago, and the image that came to mind was of my granddaughter. She was about one and a half to two years old when her daddy had to go off for about six weeks to a, uh, a training time. And uh, she has two older siblings, and we knew when, when dad went away that uh, the older siblings were going to miss him. But we, but we really thought that she would, not that she would forget him, but that, but that she wouldn't necessarily be as affected by his uh, being away for this training as the other two were. That was, they were the ones we were mostly worried about. But he came back after the six-week training, and we were surprised that all of a sudden when, when she saw him, she wrapped her arms around his neck and she clung to him. And that's the picture that comes to mind. We're supposed to cling to the Lord our God. We had to actually pry her arms. It wasn't we, but uh, her mom had to almost pry her arms from around her daddy's neck because she was so happy to see him and didn't want him to leave again. And that's the image that I believe that, that Joshua is uh, drawing for us right here in this particular passage. Uh, he, of course, isn't thinking of my granddaughter, but he wants us to have that same kind of passion that we're going to cling to the Lord, even as Kaylee clinged to her daddy. Now that's the idea here. How do we do that? Well, first of all, we, uh, we, we keep in his word. We regularly um, uh, read and study and meditate on the scripture. That's how he works in us and through us. We regularly pray. We are, are people who, who, in order to have a relationship with the God of Israel, we have to be able to speak to him and listen to him, just as we do with any other person. I can't, I can't suggest to you that I have a relationship with someone that I don't talk to, or that I never see, or that I never listen to. Now, there are people that I know that I talk with them on the phone. I may never have met them personally, but we do have conversation, and it's a conversation that goes back and forth. So you don't have to be in the same proximity. Uh, but the reality is that I would not have a relationship with those people if I never talked to them. And so it is with us. I, I don't understand those people who think that because they have waved their hand at the evangelist and said, yes, I put my trust in Jesus, that they are Christians, and that's all that matters. If he is a person, the goal is to get to know that person, and you get to know people through communication. Now, of course, my granddaughter was just very limited in the amount of communication that she could do at that particular time, which is part of the reason we thought that maybe she wouldn't be as affected by her daddy's going. But the reality is that she longed for him. There was something that she was missing. And maybe she couldn't verbalize that, but she knew it. And as soon as she saw him, she made sure that, that she hung on because she didn't want to lose that again. And that's the image. That's the idea that you and I need to have as we cling 
to the Lord our God. Joshua wanted to make sure that the people that were listening to him, that had been under his leadership, would be people who would enter into a relationship with the living God, the one revealed through the laws of Moses, the one revealed by the historical events that had happened among them. This was the God that revealed himself to them, and this is the God that Joshua wanted his people to cling to, and he wants us to do the same. I believe that that's what, uh, that that's the image. Hang on. Don't let him get away. Don't let him escape. Keep in constant communication with him. Lord, thank you for your grace and for your goodness, the grace that's operating in each one of our lives day by day. And we pray that we would listen to you, that we would speak to you, that we would pour out every concern and heartache and uh, joy that is in our hearts before you. And I thank you that you love to listen to that. And I pray, Father, that we would listen to your voice in the scripture and in the preaching of your word and in the testimonies of those that love you. And so grant to, grant to us that grace to deepen our communication with you, to truly cling to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful day.